And here's the chassis for the Hoonigan truck. Now, look at the arms, those double wishbones, the rotors inside. Uh, they're pretty good looking. I think the Fortec has better looking rotors, but these are these are all right. If I turn the wheel, so you can kind of see the vent uh, on there for the rotors. But they still look pretty good. Uh, I think the wheels are a nice touch. The tires are really nice on this. I mean, these are far better than the Fortec 3.0. Uh, these you can swap out for links, and then you can adjust the toe, which is another bonus, something you cannot do on the Fortec. Uh, so the adjustability is just great. And the plastics, I mean, these are nice. These are a fiber blend, uh, which is great. And all of these components, if you remember the TC4, it's the same types of plastics. Uh, look at the arms in here and there's actually very little play you have the metal cups uh inside instead of plastic very very little play compared i mean there's still well i mean the steering that's normal but if you move the the actual arms there's very little play on there which is good it makes it a more precise vehicle uh compared to the Fortec because it's a three link system now don't bash the Fortec. I'm going to do an explanation about that system. Associated does that too. But look at the metal components. So there's little metal cups. Fortec does have plastic. If you drive it really hard after a while, you can damage them. I've actually only damaged the front, not the rear. Uh, but I figured I'd point that out. Uh, that's where the caliper holds on. So it has those two screws. A little different. Uh, right here, the gears. This is massive. Now, if we look at the chassis, uh, well, let's look at the motor. So it's a 13. Uh, this is a three slot and the ESC is 3S capable. So it's 2S and 3S. That's why this thing's a three, sorry, a 15 turn instead of a 12 turn like the Vortex. So 2S, the Vortex should be faster. The shaft, very nice, thin metal shaft. Uh, Vortex, the shaft is fine. It's thicker, but, uh, again, look at the composite, all of the materials, very good quality. It's a good quality car for the price, it really is. Now, a lot of it, you're, you are paying for the body, and it's an amazing body. Uh, bumper, decent bumper. Uh, I still wouldn't crash it uh, full speed against the curb or a car tire. Car tire will win. Now, the chassis is sort of the cheap part. This is just plain plastic, uh, which I'm very, very surprised. I thought they would use some type of composite similar to the T4 uh, or the T7 for that matter. Uh, but at least they have TC. But again, look at the drivetrain. Very robust. I know some people are going to be taking the this car and start overpowering it. The tires are really nice. So they're probably going to be able to run. Just check the glue and look at that amazing body. Now we have to look at the Fortec and see if this is really the Fortec killer and will eat up on its sales significantly. All right, so here's one of my Fortecs. Now, uh, I do really like the Fortec platform. It is a great fl platform, I think, to get started in touring car, especially if you're just bashing. I mean, this thing is great. There's a lot of part support. It's easy to fix. Uh, I do have teardown videos on it. And it doesn't matter if it's the 2.0 or 3.0, whether it's the Corvette or the Supra differentials, all the basics are the same. The only thing that really changes is the body mounting system. And uh, well, there's one center mounting point on the 3.0s. But uh, you can check those videos out. So it's just uh, Fortec 2.0 teardown. Uh, but uh, this is it. So uh, right off the bat, you notice a few differences between this and the team associated Hoonigan truck. Um, I mean, there's a lot. One, this section over here, notice this is smaller, more compact, more to the rear, just a gear there, gear there, versus the big housing over here, that large reinforcement. Uh, the chassis is different. So as you can see, this is a tub. Uh, this has been run very, very lightly compared to the other one. Uh, but it still looks like a fiber composite. Uh, so the tub is still pretty good, uh, as opposed to the Huni truck, which looks to be just a plain piece of plastic sheet. Uh, but the main thing uh, or the main difference is really going to be in the suspension. So if you look at these arms, you can really see a lot of play. So this is not a precision vehicle. This is not a competition vehicle. Uh, and, but that has nothing to do with this, really. 
even precision vehicles or uh, uh, competition vehicles by Team Associated have that slot. That's just the nature of having an arm which has two mounting points, one, two, right? Here we go, one, two. And then just having a link on top, which is just one point. There's no um, forward or back. Uh, there's not a second point to create a reinforcement to reinforce that. That's the reason why you get all of this play. If I just grab the arm, I mean, even the arm has, actually the arm has a lot of play too. But if you grab the top link, that's pretty normal. Now, uh, before, see the rear, same thing with the rear. And that's just the nature of the car. Now, this car drifts like you wouldn't believe. It's awesome. I, I really do like the 2.0. To be honest, the 2.0 is my favorite out of the Trax's Vortex. The 3.0s, they're all right. Corvette, yeah, kind of over that one. Uh, some of you are like, that's an awesome car. You know what? If you love it, great. Uh, your money, buy as many 3.0s as you like. Uh, you know, have fun with them as long as you're are saying it's good with me. Uh, although the Supra, that's such a beautiful looking car. And just FYI on the 3.0s, the Supra tires are far better than the Corvette tires. Just get the Supra tires put them on your Corvette. Uh, that's really the way to go. Now, uh, let's go back to this. So this is a team associated buggy. Again, the same exact thing. Now the lower arm, notice given the length, it doesn't have as much play, but it does have some play. But given the length, not as much really. But the top, notice how the top is far more pronounced. Now with associated, really, it's the slop on the steering. They're known for that. Uh, but the point is, there's still going to be some play rear on the top, the bottom even on the bottom. There's still a little. So, you know, before you bash the Traxxas for being a Traxxas, not that all of you would, but it's not because it's a Traxxas vehicle or the design it sports. It's a very good design for what it is. That's just the nature of the system. Now, there are advantages and disadvantages. The disadvantages are less precise. But then again, you're not buying this car to be precise. You're buying this car than likely to bash. Uh, now, because of that extra play, you're gonna hit things. This is gonna move, shift. It's probably gonna take the impact a little better, to be honest. Uh, if you break something, it's gonna be easier to replace, less parts. On the Hoonigan, you're probably gonna break both arms. Uh, there's a high chance you may end up doing that. Why? Because it has in the arms two little, you know, molded pins that lock it in place. So those you could break. Uh, so that's a potential downside. But the Hoonigan truck, I think, would be a more precise vehicle. So if you wanted to drift with that shaft car, so these are all shaft cars, uh, Hoonigan truck is probably going to be a little more precise. The other thing too, the Hoonigan truck is a 15 turn versus a 12 turn. A uh, little slower motor, uh, but you can make up for it with gearing. And one of the reasons why it has the slower motor is because the ESC is 3S capable. This is only 2S capable. Now, really quick, suspension. Let me show you a different car. Now, this is a completely different beast. This is an X-Ray X4. Uh, so this was uh, this is the current year model. Notice the double suspension. Now, this actually has ball, uh, ball studs uh, in here, which I like best. Uh, but if you look at this one, I mean, look how precise this thing is. I mean, slop, what slot? Uh, th this is, but then again, oh, this is such a nice car. Uh, but then again, you're looking at, I don't remember, $700 for just the kit, no electronics, nothing in there. Uh, so keep that in mind. There's also a price, which takes me back to this. And now for the pricing. Uh, so as of this video, now I'm just using a main. Uh, I like using them as an example. I'm not saying necessarily buy from them. No, this is not sponsored, just like any of my videos. They're not. Uh, 
but it's just a good reference. Uh, so this is what we have. We have $390. Now, when this was first coming out, I thought it was a little less. I thought it was $20 less. Maybe it went up, maybe not. I'm not sure. Uh, the body is beautiful. It's a gorgeous looking body as I showed. Uh, actually, no, I did not show. But uh, if you remove these stickers, there is a part in the back where you can install LEDs. Uh, so you can install LEDs for the front, not the rear, unfortunately, but the front you can. Uh, and uh, this F100, I believe this is an F100, looks like an F100. Uh, I always forget when Ford went from the F100s to the F150s, uh, something I could look up. Uh, maybe they should have just stuck with F1 and F2, like they did back in the day. Uh, but that aside, point is, body is gorgeous. Uh, it really is. Uh, now the chassis, it's really nice. Most of the components are a fiber blend. If you're familiar with the TC4, I used to have that car, I used to love it, that shaft car. Uh, it, it's very similar composite material. Uh, let's see what other cars, well, most of the fiber that is used in many of the cars, so what Associated uses in their buggies, like their B6s or their short course SE6s, uh, it's the same fiber, that same type of material. That's what all these components are made out of, except for the chassis plate. That appears to just be plain plastic, uh, which I was pretty surprised, pretty surprised, especially because the TC4, uh, for example, it was all the same composite material. Um, it was actually quite strong, very, very lightweight. Unfortunately, I don't have the weight and I don't have the gearing uh, for this vehicle. I did not take my tools and unfortunately, well, I guess fortunately for the owner, he was taking care of a race. Uh, so I you know, didn't want to bother him. But again, very good materials in general except for the very bottom of the tub, which is fine, no big deal. Uh, if you look at the Fortec, Traxxas went the right direction with these, and what I mean by that is Traxxas dropped the price. My God, they had inflated the prices of these like you wouldn't believe. Now, just for a little bit of history, uh, this chassis, you used to be able to buy that for 205 Now it's 230 And sometimes you could find them online for less than 200 bucks. Uh, these here, uh, they used to be about 260. I could be wrong on the price, but uh, word on the street is you used to be able to find them for even less than that uh, many times. And then all of a sudden they went over $300. I mean, for some reason there was a period of time when the GT was more expensive than the Ford Mustang. The only difference was the body. Go figure. But anyway, now they dropped the price another $300. And really quick, uh, I have a few of these. And by a few of these, uh, I have one. Uh, when pandemic first hit, uh, in March 2000, uh, a lot of people were trying to order online. So I used to travel an hour from where I live over to a, I guess, a local track, we'll say, NorCal Hobbies, the owner's Eric. Really cool guy. So I used to just pick up a bunch of parts for buddies and family members here where I live and just run over there, get the parts, come back, right? I was just doing it because I loved RCs. Uh, long story short, ended up buying so much stuff, hit the $2,000 mark. So once you do that, uh, back then it was $160 store credit. So I had been eyeing one of these just because of the Mustang body, I'll be honest. I love the body. I love this Mustang. And, uh, you know, after the discount, I think the price back then was about 260 250 260 uh, The owner just gave it to me, which is awesome. Uh, it was this Grabber, Grabber Blue. Uh, so another thing that I'm saying here, I know I'm going off topic. I tend to do that. But if you go to NorCal Hobbies, uh, the owner, Eric, really cool guy. Uh, his heyday, I mean, he, he still goes and competes in a variety of places, but, you know, he's won national championships. Uh, he'll tell you stories. He, he loves nitro, knows so much about nitro engines. I mean, go and pick his brain. If he's not busy, he's super busy because he does have a shop in Fresno, California as well, so not just San Jose. Uh, but he's a really cool guy, 
very humble as well. Uh, loves helping people, uh, especially the new guys. Uh, I remember back when I first started, uh, even if he was busy, he would try to find somebody that could help me out just to teach me the ropes. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I'm going to say the following. If you can buy something at a shop, buy something at a shop. Why? Keep them alive. I mean, he will match a main prices. He will. Uh, and some other, on, uh, I think Amazon as well. I don't remember. You'll have to check. But as of this video, he matches a main uh, and he's matched. I think it's Amazon. I have to check. Well, I guess you could go ask. But uh, the other thing too is if you live a little farther away, let's just say you don't want to drive an hour, you don't want to drive two hours, however far, you can call. It's NorCal Hobbies, San Jose, California. And you can order on the phone, pay over the phone, right? Credit card over the phone. And they will half the stuff shipped to you. So if it's like a whole model, uh, or at least that's what they used to do. So again, this is based on what they used to do. So I've loved this car. I mean, for a long time, drove the tires off of it. I mean, I, th this is the car that you've seen in the speed runs, and then I'll go back to the stock electronics and then speed runs again. It just takes so much abuse. The differentials are so robust on this thing. Uh, if you watch my teardown videos, you'll see the differentials. I don't actually point it out. I just take them apart. Uh, I believe I pointed out when I talk about in my other video where I talked about the must upgrades, uh, which one of them is a locking spool. But it's such a fabulous car. So anyway, uh, I mean, maybe Eric will watch this video if you do. Thank you so much. I love it. And then I really do. Uh, and then after that, I actually ended up buying another one for my wife. So one time we both went out there just to race. I had some other vehicles too, but uh, I want to race with her. So, you know, she entered the rookie class. I went in there with her and then we raced. That's why I have a second one. Uh, so the one that I just showed you, that's actually my wife's. That's why it's so pristine. Uh, it doesn't get driven as much. So I'm going to start driving it. Uh, and then I actually bought my kid uh, the orange one. Uh, this was last uh, Black Friday. So I ended up buying this one at NorCal Hobbies at his shop. Uh, and then when the Corvette came out, he had the Corvette. He had the silver special edition. Uh, so he sold it to me. It was the first one they got. Uh, sold it to me. Uh, actually, the car, the Fortech that I got for my wife, the one that you just saw, it had the purple body, which back then when it came out it was the purple edition, and it was the first purple, you know, special edition that came out. Uh, so he sold it to me so I could get that for my wife. Although I got a different body for it because I, my wife didn't want to scratch it, which I totally understand. I mean, it's pretty purple. Uh, but anyway, that aside, uh, $300. And uh, $300 for the durability of this car, to be honest, there isn't a car out there that I've used and abused so much like this vehicle. And the parts are easy to get. I mean, you go to NorCal Hobbies, they have a ton of parts, or at least they used to. Uh, they're building another section of the store, making it bigger. So I'm not sure if what their inventory looks like or if it's unboxed or not. Uh, but uh, parts are readily available, usually, uh, as opposed to other brands. And keep in mind that this truck, this is a brand new vehicle, brand new platform. Uh, so likelihood of a shop stocking up most of the parts is going to be very, very rare. I mean, just think of the electronics. Motor goes out, same thing. Although some people are probably going to be wanting to swap the electronics out of this and make it super fast. I would not recommend that. You're, you're going to destroy it. You, you really are. And then good luck finding parts. And I love Team Associated. I mean, these, you know, I run their short course. I run their buggy. Uh, I've had, uh, like I mentioned, TC4. I used to love that. And then when I was about to get the TC7, they discontinued it, of course. And then you couldn't get any TCs at all until now. So it's been quite a hiatus bef you know, between then and now. Uh, so this is a brand new platform. The question is, how long are they going to keep it, really? You really don't know. And that's one of the things. Versus this Traxxas vehicle, I'm going to say it's tried and true when it comes to bashing. 
not competitive racing. Unless you're doing a Forte class, then everybody's running the same thing, so who cares? But you're not going to take this and go into a 17.5 Sportsman and try to win. It's not going to happen. These are too heavy. By the time you fit a battery and everything, even with weight savings, and by weight savings I mean using the mounts off of this car, which are lighter, cutting the receiver box, and then just putting the receiver on top of the servo, and a few little things, you know, taking off the little calipers, you're still going to be at 1,700 grams. And the weight for TC is 1,320, so 1,320 grams. So you're going to be way overweight. Uh, you would have to run a shorty pack to try to drop some of that weight. The problem with the shorty packs is you're looking at about 4,000 milliamps versus a 6,000 milliamp, or in TC, you could even go with an 8,400. So the voltage is going to drop really, really fast. That's the issue. S but if you're just bashing, who cares, right? There's no real rules you have to abide with except for whatever your wallet can support as far as things that are you're going to break. But this car has been very durable. Now, some I'm going to make a few little notes. Drivetrain, this one does have... As I pointed out, uh, the metal cups, this one has plastic, and I have damaged those plastic cups. So on, on my particular car, I have the metal cups. I went ahead and did the conversion. Uh, my wife, hers is completely stock. I mean, even the gearing is stock on hers. Uh, but I did that. Now, I also went with the HR, uh, so hot racing uh, CVDs or uh, shafts and those things are amazing I put those on uh, about two weeks ago so this is a shout out to uh, Thomas Downey Jr. Uh, thank you very much for your comment uh, Thomas Downey Jr. recommended uh, so I had the Trax's constant velocity ones and those things just kept falling apart and my experience with those things is they just fall apart the little pin inside just falls out uh, so I made a video not recommending them, and then he put in the comments, you know, do the HR shafts. So I went, found the hot racing ones, bought them, and then uh, put them on right away. So I've been running those hard for about 10 days, and those things are not falling apart. And right now I'm using that Tekken system 2S, which does over 60 miles per hour, ton of torque, and I have not, th there's no signs of them wanting to give out or anything. Uh, so I've really been hammering those. Uh, I'm going to follow up after I've driven them a little longer. <laughs> Although, considering the abuse they've gone through, <laughs> I think I can say that they're pretty good. So, uh, so Downey, thank you so much. Uh, but again, for the price, for the price difference, honestly, $300. Fortec's not going anywhere, Fortec 2.0. Uh, the Hoonigan truck is amazing, but it is not the Fortec killer. Uh, for a variety of reasons. One, Fortec simply has the support. Fortec is simply a great bashing platform. Despite the play and all that good stuff, the associated, you're probably going to end up ordering things online, uh, waiting for them a while, and next thing you know, Team Associated will probably discontinue this truck in four years. I have no idea. Hopefully not. It looks really, really cool. The parts look great. Uh, but with a lot of these competitive brands, uh, such as Team Associated, Losi, uh, that's what they do. They always have something, uh, you know, in the name of innovation, they come up with something new, and then you're out of luck. Versus Traxxas, some of their models, love them or hate them, they're there for a long time. So for the basher, recreational, RC enthusiast, or the newbie, Fortec 2.0, I think, is still a great choice. Uh, so based on this, uh, I hope this information was useful or at least entertaining. Uh, please comment below. Keep in mind, I respect both of the vehicles. Uh, I think they're great just for the price difference. Uh, let's just say if I had a kid, which I do, I would just buy my kid a Fortec, which I did. Uh, but if you can afford them all and keep them all safe, clean, and drive them and enjoy them, 
why not? Just get them both. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you have not, and I'll catch you in the next one. Oh, 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 oh,